So we see the product. We see a product of two expressions equal to 0. So we set each one equal to 0. Tangent of x equals 0. And sine squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Right? OK. Tangent of x is equal to 0. Um, again, it's probably helpful to look at the unit circle and say, you know, when is tangent of x going to be um, equal to 0? Well, tangent of x, remember, tangent is y over x, right? So tangent is going to be 0 when the x coordinate is 1, but the y value is 0, whenever the y value is 0. So that's going to be at these two angles. 0 and 0 and pi. So if I want to find a, I could say um, x. x equals 0. And then you could say plus you know, 2 pi n, if you want to. x equals pi plus 2 pi n. But again, guys, do we have a, like, an easier way to write that? Couldn't we just write pi n, right? x equals pi n. x equals pi n is going to satisfy 0, right? When n is 0, you get 0. When n is 1, you get pi. When n is 2, you get 2 pi. So that would be your simplified answer. Now for the next one, this one's kind of interesting because we could do sine squared minus 1 equals 0. And you could apply your inverse operations. And if you already forgot, mm -hmm. remember you got to make sure that you include um, plus or minus 1. So again, we'll look at the same circle and we say, all right, when is x equal to plus or minus 1? Well, or the y coordinate, I'm sorry, equal to 1, plus or minus 1. Right? So you could say x equals pi halves plus 2 pi n. x equals 3 pi halves plus 2 pi n. Or if you're starting to get good at this, since these have a equal distance away from each other, we could also just write x equals pi halves plus pi n, right? Because they're pi distance away from each other. So for answer A, that's what I would give. Now for answer B, we just need to find the answers between 0 and 2 pi, right? Yes? So I'll write this as a solution set. Is 0, so 0 is in there. Is 0 included between 0 and 2 pi? Right? Remember it was written like this, 0 to 2 pi? So 0 works. Pi half works. Pi works. 3 pi halves works. Now again, as we go around, we get back to 2 pi. Does 2 pi work? No. What's the difference here? Included, excluded, right? So that's it. Done. And that's important when we look at c, which if you remember my restriction was 0 to negative pi halves. So in this case, which of these angles satisfy between 0 and negative pi halves? 0, right? You could do a negative pi halves. Um, all right, negative pi halves. Yeah, negative pi halves would be a solution, but, it, but it's not included. So therefore, the only solution here is 0. OK? FYI, just a quick little step too. Could you guys also use an identity here? What is sine squared minus 1? Does anybody know? It's not cosine. What is it? No? It's not cosine squared. What is it? What's sine squared minus 1? Pythagorean identities? Negative cosine squared of x. So therefore, you basically just get cosine of x is equal to 0. For what values of x is cosine equal to 0? When is cosine of x equal to 0? Pi halves and 3 pi halves. So if you didn't want to use inverse operations and you recognize an identity, you guys now know identities, right? So you can now do, use that to your advantage. All right.